Stealth in Payday 2 can be a little daunting, and maybe a little confusing for people that don't have much experience. In this video, I've compiled a bunch of tips for stealth that may not be obvious for those of you just starting out. Hopefully this will help out anyone that needs it, and maybe for more experienced people, there's something in here that you didn't know before. First and foremost, this video assumes that you at least know the basic mechanics of stealth, like the pager system, how to use ECMs and body bags, stuff like that. For a quick rundown of how stealth works in this game, check out the stealth tutorial which can be found here. If you're looking for how to make a build to use for stealth, I have something for you. I'll leave a link to it in the description, so check it out. It's also the same build that I will be using for this video as well. So first, we're going to start off with a real quick rundown of how ECMs work. I know that as a starting player, it's not explained in any way what ECMs do other than jam electronic signals, so I'll go over what they can and what they can't do. First, ECMs have the ability to jam calls for both guards and civilians. It also jams cameras so that they're unable to function as long as the ECM is active. However, once the ECM duration is up, calls can be made again, and cameras will also be functional as they were before. ECMs do not have the ability to block pagers without the ECM specialist skill. Even if you do have the skill, all the ECM does is block the pager until the ECM duration runs out. Then, the pager call will show up. ECMs do not have the ability to block certain alarm triggers on certain maps. One such one is the panic button on Bank Heist. ECMs have a map-wide effect. This means that you can place one down and it will affect the entire map regardless of where it was placed. So the reason why I'm going over some of the simple mechanics of ECMs is because I tend to see a lot of new people bringing body bags when they try to stealth for the first time. And while that's not exactly wrong, this game does put a lot of emphasis on avoiding killing sometimes. And I also just assume that most people don't realize how powerful the ECM is yet. So I wanted to do a quick overview of what it can do, so people can get a better idea of its capabilities. Another thing that this game doesn't really tell you that I think is fairly important is the detection range of some of the different objects and entities that can be spotted in stealth. You, as a player, have the smallest detection range, as long as you have good visibility and good concealment for your weapons. Objects like loot bags and body bags, they can be spotted fairly far away from guards and civilians. The furthest detection range is probably alerted guards and civilians being spotted by other guards and civs. So here's a quick example showing off the different ranges. As you can see, the first guard notices the body bag, and when he stopped and told me not to move, that is when he noticed me, the player. In the background, you can see that the other guards will notice the alerted guard from very far away. So here you can get a small idea of how far away guards will start noticing some of your actions in stealth, so make sure you pay attention to what you do at all times. Detection is in the head. When you kill someone and leave a body behind, whether it's a guard or civilian, they can be detected by other entities such as guards, civilians, and cameras. However, what those other entities detect is only the head of the body, not the entire body itself. This will also apply to tied up civilians. So how does that help you? Well, in this clip you can see that I'm fiddling with moving the civilian around, and soon enough a guard will walk around the corner and start to spot me. The civilian I'm with is clearly in view of the guard, yet because his head is stuck in the wall, he's actually not being spotted by the guard. As soon as I move the civilian, his head will show, and the guard will be alerted to the tied civvy. This here proves that the detection is all in the head. This is useful for, well, most obviously, moving civilians. If you can have their head hidden behind a desk or putting their head in the wall, they'll be undetected by anything that comes by. This can also apply to the dead bodies of people that you've killed. If their head falls out of the way of a camera, or you shoot them in a way where their body falls in a favorable position, you might not need to worry about their body being seen, saving you a body bag. This also applies to the player. The only detection that matters is the head of the guard or civilian you're looking at, and also your own head. As long as you can't see their face, you can hide behind things that normally don't make sense to hide behind. 
Take the skinny pole, for example. The player is much wider than the pole, but it just goes to show that it's just fine in hiding me from the civilian walking by. Stop, don't move. This is what guards will tell you when they've caught you sneaking around. Once you've been spotted, you have to deal with the guard, as there's no way to get out of being spotted other than killing him. However, sometimes the guard that spotted you is out in the open, or in an area that is normally patrolled by guards frequently. Killing him where he stands could be bad for you. So what you can do instead is take his advice. Don't move. When a guard spots you, there is a chance that instead of shooting you, he'll approach you instead. By luring a guard to you, you'll be able to kill him in a much more favorable position and take his pager safely. Of course, he won't always approach you. Sometimes, he'll just go guns a-blazing instead. If you do manage to lure a guard, make sure you deal with him before he gets too close to you. If he manages to walk all the way up to you, he'll cuff you and sound out an alert, ending your stealth. Shotguns are your friend. In this game, you can use shotguns to propel the bodies of people you kill for some hilarious ragdolls. However, these ragdolls also have a use in stealth. Much like the previous tip, this is for the purpose of getting a guard or civilian in a more favorable position after you kill them. By getting up close and personal and shooting a guard in a certain direction, you can potentially have his body land in a place that is much safer than where he started out. In this example here, it's much safer to take the pager in the security room rather than out in the open. You can use this to your advantage on any stealth map. Not much in the way of happening. Dominate guards in stealth. Dominating guards in stealth is fairly simple, but many new people probably have never really thought about trying it. To dominate a guard in stealth, simply yell at them the instant you get detected. This will guarantee that the guard will give up, and he will put his gun down as if he were a tied sieve. Of course, if the guard has a pager, it will still activate as normal. This tip is best paired with the previous one. It's very easy to influence the placement of the body while using a shotgun on a dominated enemy. So you may be asking, is there even a reason to dominate in stealth? Why not just kill him outright? Well, there actually is quite a few reasons. For one, on higher difficulties, enemies will have more health. A lot more health. So when you get detected by a murky water guard on one down difficulty, you probably won't be able to kill him in just one shot. This gives him a very good chance of retaliating back at you. As we've learned previously, alerted guards also have a chance of instantly shooting at you. By dominating them, you give them no chance to react. While we're here, an important thing to mention regarding killing people in stealth is that any weapon you use will be able to kill the guard in one hit as long as it's a stealth attack. What I mean by stealth attack is shooting or meleeing a guard while they don't detect anything. This is always a guaranteed one hit kill on the target that you're attacking, regardless of how much health they have. The last thing to note about dominating in stealth is that it won't work on gangsters, bikers, Colombians, Basically, all of those odd enemy units that aren't classified as guards. The Sprint, Jump, Crouch Technique. It's exactly as the name implies. You sprint, you jump, and you crouch in quick succession. So what does this accomplish other than make you look and feel pretty stupid? I'm sure you're well aware that detection in this game is heavily influenced by the stance you're in. You're detected by guards and civilians fastest while you're sprinting, and slowest when you're crouching. So it makes sense to always stay crouched then, right? Not always the case. You're very slow when crouching, which can mean that even though your detection goes up the slowest, you'll also spend the most exposure in front of a guard, which can still lead to you getting caught. So what you can do is combine the stances, get the speed of sprinting, but the detection of crouching. So here's an example. This guy here won't spot me from that distance when I'm crouching, but when I'm standing, he'll see me. If I walk across, he'll detect me pretty fast. Same goes with sprinting. Now if I sprint, jump, crouch, he'll barely detect me at all. You get the speed of sprinting with the detection of crouching, which can help immensely for getting past guards or getting yourself out of a pinch. 
By using this technique, you can definitely push the limits of what you can get away with when avoiding guards and civilians. Distracting guards. So these next two tips, they are gonna be odd ones. For this one, you can distract a guard by running circles around him. Yes, it works. No, there aren't very many situations where it would come in handy. The only time that I could think of where you'd want to do this is when you've already killed four guards and you don't have any pagers left. Killing another alerted guard would bring out his pager, which would instantly sound the alarm, whether or not you take the pager. From there, distracting the guard that caught you is really the only way out. Of course, since you're busy distracting him, you can't actually do anything yourself, so you'll have to rely on another person to help keep stealthing with you. As long as you have him distracted though, the guard will focus on trying to shoot you instead of trying to sound the alarm. If you do it right, you can distract him without him shooting out and alerting other people. But of course, since this isn't the most reliable distraction method, it's still pretty likely that the guard will alert others around him somehow. This is very much a last ditch effort when all things have failed, and if by some miracle no camera or guard spot him, you can continue to do this for as long as you need to. Juggling pagers. Again, this is a last ditch effort. Much like distracting guards, the only time you'd really do this is when you're out of pagers, but you still have things you want to do in stealth. Unlike the previous tip, this one requires two people to do. Basically, you and another person take a pager, but never finish it. So say you start taking the pager first. When you get close to finishing the call, the other person starts picking it up, and in a sense, it resets the call. When your friend picks up the pager, you let go and wait for him to get close to finishing. Then, you take the pager before your friend finishes, and you repeat the process as long as you want or need to. Very cheesy, very few useful applications of this technique, but still worth knowing in the off chance that you do get to use it. Nothing beats knowledge and experience. All the tips in the world won't help unless you get to practicing the missions yourself. And with this game in particular, while the mechanics of stealth may be shared across all the heists you do, each mission will have their own quirks and ways to complete them. For example, in Big Oil Day 1, there are no pager guards, and the method for completion is assassinating all the bikers quickly and quietly. In Shadow Raid, it's wiser to avoid killing guards as much as possible. Some maps may have a security room with a guard that watches over the cameras, like in First World Bank. And some missions have their own alarm triggers, such as shooting the glass in car shop. Whatever the case may be, each mission is different in their own way, and the best way to learn about how to complete it is to go out and do it. Or, you know, you could also watch the videos I've made on them, that's, that's fine too. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.